How's it going everybody? Kevin here once again, and I have a very special video for today. Today we're talking with Hidden Xperia. If you guys don't know him, he's one of the best Halo content creators out there. He focuses a lot on the Halo's lore and story elements. So in this video, what do we do? We talk about the lore. In this video, we talk about the campaign of Halo Infinite and a little bit about the Endless as well. Now there were so many great talking points we brought up in this video that I kind of chopped it up into two parts. So we'll be releasing part two next week as well. So if you want to catch that video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Channel. Link to his channel in the pinned comment down below. Like this guy is basically the reason why I know anything about Halo's lore. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Cap Rex slays as now that the dust has settled on Halo Infinite's campaign, do you still consider it amazing or do you think that it was lackluster experience? Luke, I'll let you take it away as you are the guest. Let's take the first word. Um, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> there's the odd little problem that I've seen pop up with it that I didn't notice in my first few playthroughs. But honestly, broadly speaking, I still enjoy it as much as I did the first time. Uh, mostly, at least. Like, like I said, there's the odd little thing, like the repetitive rooms and linear levels has gotten quite bad on replays. Um, and the, I've noticed the, the grapple hook really dominates the open world exploration. I never use vehicles, like, ever. Um, so they've definitely hurt the experience a little bit, but... Overall, I still genuinely enjoy it as much as I did on my first playthrough. I still think it's a really good campaign. It's not as good as Halo 1, 2, or 3 for me, but I still I still really like it. It's my favorite campaign since ODST. Um, um, I'd say it's, for me, probably in terms of enjoyment, about on par with ODST, uh, roughly in that area. Yeah, I still, I still really like it, honestly. <laughs> What makes you think that, well, what holds it back from being up there with CE 1, 2, and 3? I think part of that for me is that those three games felt so cohesive in their stories, even though obviously there was only ever meant to be one Halo game. Halo 2 and 3 weren't meant to happen originally, but uh, even with that in mind, 1, 2, and 3 flow together so nicely. The stories make real cohesive sense. There's so much going on in them, so many moving parts, so many characters, so many twists and turns. And I think that Infinite was lacking that. Um, that's one of the things that I will say over time has slightly hurt Infinite's campaign for me. I think it worked initially, but the, on replays, it's not as good. The lack of characters. Uh, Infinite's character suite is only like six main characters. Let me think. Cortana, Chief, The Weapon, Fernando, Harbinger, and Escher. And that's six main characters, mostly. Uh, so I... I don't know, missing a lot of characters as well that I really like, like the Arbiter, uh, like Lasky, that I would have liked to have seen. There's just something about Halo 1, 2, and 3. I grew up playing them. Yes, there is obviously a little bit of nostalgia there. Those games, to me, mean so much that I I can I can never not love those games more than almost anything else in gaming, uh, for, for that reason alone. Uh, those stories mean so much to me. They got me through like, so many rough times. They've been, like, I, I just... I just love them so much that I don't think anything, it would take an absolutely pretty much perfect game to top that trilogy for me. I'm kind of in the same way too. I also just like, I feel like I kind of like, there's like the original trilogy and then like everything else after that, it feels kind of like for right. me. And like, I can always say like, like I always said like Halo 5's multiplayer to me was like the best multiplayer since Halo 3. I say that this campaign was the best one since probably Halo 3. Um, I might like the gameplay yeah. a little bit more when it comes to Reach, personally, because I think Reach has like the best gameplay out of all the campaigns, but that's still hold, hold Halo 2 is like the best story. But like the way Halo Infinite does the gameplay, does its storytelling, it's so different than all the other games that like, I would feel like it's kind of tough to compare. And I just kind of like the way I judge the campaign, it's just kind of more at face value. I think a lot of people are kind of judging it based off of like what could be possible because we've played Halo for less, what, 20 years basically. That like we right. know what is possible with a game like Halo. When we don't see that in the game, we kind of feel a little disappointed, you know? But then I just kind of take a step back and just kind of judge the game for what it is. And I still think the game is freaking awesome. Like I've only played it once through and I didn't complete everything. You know, or at least I didn't do all like the horde operating bases. I didn't do all the uh, outposts and stuff like that. So now I'm, on, I'm on, currently on my second playthrough slowly. I'm kind of focusing more on just getting better at, you know, ranked multiplayer. But uh, yeah. currently playing through my second playthrough on like ranked heroic 
Yeah, not Ragnarok. Um, <laughs> Ragnarok. <laughs> Oof. Oh, if, if, only yeah. There, yeah, if only there was score, uh, score attack, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, true. That's a good point. Yeah, I'm on... I think I did, uh, in the end, like, six playthroughs. And oh, wow. I, like, <laughs> yeah, you know it. <laughs> obviously, I did, I did burn out a little bit. That's a little burnout, yeah. Did, <laughs> right, I, but I did it six times, right? So that was always going to happen. That's no fault of the game. Um I just, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Um, I like the open world uh, take on Halo. Um, I do want to see some more linearity in the future. I think both open world and linear levels can both coexist very well. The li linear levels have just got to be a lot better than the ones in Infinite because Warship Gabracken, uh, Foundations, and... Uh, um, oh, no, Command Spire. The Command Spire was really good as well. But mm. the other ones were like kind of meh I, I felt so definitely the linear levels need some improvement but i do want to see both linear and open uh, like in the same game together in the future I, I don't think i could have a halo game without both of those elements of the campaign anymore honestly mm -hmm. oh yeah absolutely because like most of the linear portions of the game were like those interior forerunner sections which kind of just like reused the same a lot of similar assets obviously each section had their own personality to them a little bit but it did yeah. feel a little same. Like there were some like those like, you know, U-turn ramps that you just kind of had to walk up, like they <laughs> utilize like multiple times over. Yeah. Which, I mean, like, you know, every campaign re reuses assets to kind of, not to pad out the time, but just kind of like, you know, fill out the space. And it would make sense that like architecturally, right? That you would, if performers were making something, they would, they would just reuse the same kind of, you know, assets. But like, you can only do it so many times over, you know? Yeah. Mm. I think as well, one of the things that affected that was how lacking the engagements were in terms of variety so like you look at halo one a sort in the control room that a lot of that level is just the same room over and over and over again but the style of engagements is so varied in each in each room that it doesn't feel the same whereas a lot of the time in infinite you get into a room all the ai just stood there waiting for you there's like mostly the same the same like classes of enemy there there's, at least for me, I didn't feel like there was that much variation in the engagements in the linear levels, which definitely hurt it a lot because a lot of the engagements felt the same in environments that also felt the same. So it was like a double whammy of just repetitiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, the kind of like the, uh, not necessarily filler sections, but the space between the boss battles, basically. It's where it kind of yeah. gets a little samey. I thought the boss, boss battles were great. Maybe not so much like the Tavares Hyperius battle, but I think, <laughs> yeah. um, pretty much everything else though felt like unique uh for the boss battles is what i'm saying is like most of them felt pretty unique had different kind of gameplay elements and they were fun to play like i, I still think like all the reviews that halo infinite got when it launched like nines and 9.5s and stuff like that are totally warranted i'd still give the campaign like a 9 9.5 out of 10. i i i can't believe i can't remember what i gave it i think 9.3 or 9.1 either or i'd keep it the same i wouldn't i don't think my review score would really change i still think i still enjoy the campaign as much now as i did on day one I still think it's as good now as I did in day one. Uh, obviously, I, I say that, maybe, maybe not as good because a few things have popped up, but mm. more or less the same. I still enjoy it as much as I did pretty much on day one. You sound like you're really contemplating like 9.3 or 9.1, like Professor Xperia <laughs> yeah. over here. Being like, well, there was a spelling error. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm trying to think why, what I gave it. It was one of the two. But either way, of this, I don't think I'd change the score. I think it's the, I think the score is good as is. Yeah, I think like a solid nine, like, and then yeah. like I think you have above and then above that if anything. But yeah, still a great campaign for sure. Uh, Random player one zero five asks, do you think we'll ever go to a different place other than Zeta Halo in the future campaign expansions? Um, I hope so. I hope so <laughs> as well. Yeah, um, I've seen some of the concept art out there uh, that was like from the uh, Halo art, Halo Infinite art book where. At least it showed like one section that was kind of broken out that was like completely like desert looking kind of atmosphere to the whole thing compared to like most of the other stuff that they showcased was kind of like you know like the pacific northwest woodlands mountains kind of range kind of stuff so i mean obviously that's concept art can't take it literally so but and plus we saw like a desert area kind of thing in like the intro uh teaser announcement back in 2018 of course that was also more kind of like a recruitment video for the engine to showcase the engine rather than actually like hey this is what we're gonna be doing in the game and stuff like that but i would kind of expect to see like some kind of different variation on zeta halo i think we still have a lot more storytelling to do on zeta halo before we think about leaving it um 
I think at least like two major campaign drops would happen before we even think about leaving Zeta Halo because there's just so much like awesome storytelling still need to be done from just what we played in the original campaign and also just what's there with the lore of Zeta Halo as well. Um, but well, what do you think, Luke? Do you think we'll ever leave Zeta Halo and what kind of stuff would you like to see? I think so. I definitely think we will do at some point. Um... I would love to return to Reach at some point. I think there's a lot of storytelling to be done there. I think they could do some real good storytelling with Blue Team going back to Reach. I Something I've always wanted to see is Chief going back to Reach with the Arbiter, considering like obviously they were on different sides of the war at that time. The Arbiter was partly responsible for everything that happened on Reach. I'd love to see those two together on Reach. It'd be quite a sobering moment. Uh, there's also like, I mean, to list off the amount of places in the galaxy I'd like to go to, like I'd love to go to Mithrilian at some point, I'd love to return to Earth, I'd love to go to Luna and Mars, and there's just there's so many other places that I'd love to go to. Uh, I'd love to return to the Ark at some point as well. Uh, but that said, I don't want to just skip over Zeta Halo, because that is my favourite location in the entire Halo universe. The lore and the history of that ring is frankly absurd there's so much good stuff there for stories to dive into to flesh out to incorporate into the main storyline and to add like a creepy tone or like a, a real deep disturbing tone to main stories and i don't want to leave zeta halo before that potential was realized you know like there's so oh, yeah. much there oh yeah that like that one of the things that i uh, one of the slight issues i do have about the main campaign is that there maybe wasn't enough of that deep lore integrated even in like side objectives or something into the main campaign and i'm hoping that dlcs do that because this there's just I, i'll keep saying it pun very much intended at this point there is <laughs> infinite potential in zeta halo there really the is location the lore there's, there's so much and as much as i want to go to reach i want to go back to earth i want to go to mithrilian i want to go to the ark I don't want to squander the opportunity that we have on Zeta Halo and skip over loads of cool stuff just so we do that sooner. Yeah, I think that's kind of one of the reasons why they chose Zeta Halo because one, it's just so rich in lore and plus it puts us back on a Halo ring for a Halo game, which I think yeah. was, what was the last time we were on a Halo ring. I guess technically it was Halo 3, though it didn't really feel like it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was only for a brief moment as well. Yeah, last, yeah. The last real time, I'd say, was Halo 2. I mean, people kept saying, like, well, there was a Halo ring in Halo 4. I'm like, yeah, you kind of, like, zoomed past, what, Gamma Halo? Like, yeah. Or something like that? Like, that doesn't count. Yeah, man. Gamma Halo. But, like, when you're talking I about... Still, like, I still oh, sorry, really wish we'd gone to that. That's, I still really wish we'd gone to Gamma Halo. I wish there was... I wish we'd gone down to mm -hmm. that, to that but, ring. Uh, what, shame. what kind of examples of lore that are in Zeta Halo that maybe we have... Or it's untapped potential? All the stuff to do with the ancient humans and the Palace of Pain and what the Primordial, Faber, and Mendicant Bias did to the ancient humans in the Palace of Pain, where he, like, forcibly extracted their Gayash, which is it's hard to describe what that is. Basically, for those who haven't read the books, kind of like your soul in a way, they did this really painful thing where they pulled the Gayash out of ancient humans um, to, they said it was to try and find a cure for the Flood. At least that's what Faber was doing at first, but... In the end, when Faber started working with a primordial and mendic mendicant bias, it was just for like their sadistic enjoyment. Um, there's, there's, always, there's even fake news in Halo, so yeah. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. There's just there's so much deep, creepy lore like that uh, to do with the flood, the precursors, the foreigners, the ancient humans. There's so much, and I just I want to see that potential realized because that stuff could make for such good storytelling in the main games. Yeah, I think uh, I was definitely letting my imaginations run wild when it comes to story potent potentials when it comes to Zeta Halo, just because there's so much there. But like, if they tried to cover all of that in one campaign, it would be a complete mess. Oh yeah, like that's the thing—you can't clutter a story up too much. Now that that's why I don't want us to leave Zeta Halo for a while, because. There's just so much to, to touch on and I don't want to do it in like one or two DLCs and just get it all like really rushed in. Uh, also, actually on that topic, another one of my massive fears is that all the stuff on Zeta Halo will just get cleared up too quickly and just get resolved too quickly and then it's like off onto the next thing. I don't want that to happen. I want the the impact of being on Zeta Halo to have a lasting effect on the story and to actually mean something long term as opposed to just being like cleaned up in like one or two DLCs and then that's it, onto the next one. Like mm. there's so much there. Just don't don't squander the opportunity, please. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I will say also I did, within the concept art book, uh, there is a lot of concept art of reach. There's full on pages of reach being concepted out. So I think it probably was a potential that we were going to go to Reach in some capacity. I, honestly, I thought since we we're going to do the like Heroes of Reach for the campaign, 
or that for the multiplayer deal or season now i thought it was gonna be like a little kind of like playable kind of side story kind of thing kind of like a loose story to kind of like tie everything together kind of like how like call of duty does with warzone and their season storytelling kind of stuff that we didn't really get much of that so there is definitely potential out there maybe something was created um i do remember that there was like those from the 2020 campaign reveal uh that there was like those three red dots on chief's helmet that we just never saw within the campaign <laughs> and i'm like yeah i meant to get bias <laughs> <laughs> actually uh, probably offensive bias i'm i'm yeah, now, yeah. kind of certain that's offensive bias i i'm not gonna lie i still can't believe that that was the legendary ending i'm still yeah. my brain is still quite blown from that like that is still uh, i yeah my my brain is just fried <laughs> from that still um I, the the mere thought that 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 scene with the three red dots that was from infinite's campaign at some point was more than likely offensive bias in a campaign is just insane to me <laughs> like i'm i'm actually i'm actually about to get on my knees and beg right now for that to be the dlc because if that doesn't end up happening in a dlc i'm gonna be so disappointed mm. well again like bring up the concept i keep bringing it up but there were some really interesting things and in there. there was like uh like this one kind of boss battle kind of looking thing where it's like a big forerunner structure like not the size of a guardian but like not exactly small either like pretty damn large that like there was like three or four different concepts of like this big forerunner structure that like character that comes out one of those had the three red dots on it. i've only this out multiple times in different videos but like i think this was just like some kind of cut content that we might see like with the next dlc or something like that when it comes to uh halo infinite of course that's just tinfoil hat theory but i mean like <laughs> it seems like it's already been modeled out and probably the story written yeah. and voice acted so it probably just needs to maybe just uh, have connecting tissue you know i'm ready to create I mean, better it makes sense as well because there was that whole halo of the end listing that was patented and if you've seen the ending and the legendary ending you'll know how offensive bias plays into the endless and how it's mm. probably gonna be our ally in some capacity so like it, it would make sense for that to happen and also the fact that clearly that scene had made it past like uh like storyboarding it had made it past like the idea phase that by the looks of it as we saw in the 2020 trailer literally created that scene in game so it exists it is there somewhere so hopefully it's not scrapped and it gets used for something because god i might like i am so excited for the moment where we actually end up just being in the same room as offensive bias in a game <laughs> that is still I, every time i say that my mind is just like wait you're not being serious are you <laughs> Dude, I feel the same way, but like with like rock stars. Like if, if I was in the same room with Matt Hafey, I'd be losing my mind. If I was in the same room with Dave Grohl, I'd be losing my mind. But Xperia over here is like, same. dude, if I was in the same room with like offensive bias, I'd be losing my shit. <laughs> Well, actually, to be fair, hey, go ahead. if I was in the same room as Dave Grohl, I would also lose my shit as well. So, I, <laughs> there you go. I think uh, what you mentioned previously helps kind of segue us into the next question here uh, from Roop. He asked, uh, what do you think the Endless will be like in terms of strength and their abilities? Conceptually, I think it's hard to imagine something that's more dangerous than the Flood that could be introduced into the Halo universe. Uh, since I kind of took the first one, I'll let you take this one. Yeah, right. I I I agree. That is one line that I think has kind of paled a bit for me from this from the campaign as time has passed. The whole like we both know there are things worse than the flood in this ring, and it's like mm, I'm not sure about that considering what the flood are and the threat that they posed. But anyhow, in terms of the gameplay, I, it's honestly like I literally I no idea. I don't even have an answer for this because we don't know. Like they might all look like the harbinger and this and the skimmers they might look completely different like who knows i mean the name endless could be a sense that like they're like i don't know maybe they have endless forms because there was the whole thing my, my theory still is that the endless are some sort of like offshoot of the precursors and the, the whole point of the precursors were that they were formless they could take any form they wanted they were essentially shapeshifters in a way um and the name endless kind of kind of echoes that a little bit so maybe they'll have multiple forms but then you got to think more practically in terms of gameplay how would that work you couldn't like like the whole thing with the precursor they could kind of become like anything they wanted if like technically you couldn't do that in gameplay like you couldn't have the enemy suddenly become a chair or suddenly <laughs> become like a lamppost or something like because like technically in the canon it's like yeah it could work but like in terms of gameplay like practically i don't think that would work so honestly i don't know about you but i am um, I, I literally can't even begin to conceive what they'll be like because we just don't know anything about them like we know absolutely 
zero pretty much besides obviously the fact that they were imprisoned by the foreigners and might be the true reclaimers besides that we don't know we know nothing dude saying that they like all just all suddenly become a church just makes me think of like oh my god then all of a sudden like you're playing prop hunt in halo's campaign <laughs> yeah right <laughs> oh actually you know what have you ever played prey 2017 no i haven't okay firstly play that game it is a goddamn masterpiece and secondly the the typhons in that can do that they can be the, the enemy can become any object so like you can be walking around a room and all of a sudden a cup will turn into one of them or like a mug or a monitor or a chair or a book like the whole point is they can shapeshift into becoming anything and can hide in plain sight it's kind of cool play that game but uh yeah back to back to halo i don't know that just works. sounds all right i'm already scared just hearing that like i just <laughs> terrified yeah yeah sorry uh yeah yeah back to halo i i don't know practically how that would work a shape-shifting enemy i like i said i i honestly can't even begin to think what they'll be like because we've never actually unless the harbinger is like a pure example of a, of an endless then if she's not we haven't seen them we don't know what they look like we don't know how big they are or how small they are what their builds like like if they have weapons if they have like the electricity abilities of the harbinger like we just we don't know i to be fair actually i say that we assume the skimmers are endless so maybe they're like that but who knows um i say there's two ways that they can maybe pull off the power because i think we kind of like saw maybe a glimpse of this uh one of them being endless is that apparent since you know they're still around i think what we, they said that they're unaffected by the halo ring right uh, so maybe they just don't have like a nervous system or something. Maybe they're like a jellyfish, I guess, or something like that. I don't know. True. That's a good point. Actually, I didn't think of that. That they're basically they're endless because you can't end them by the halo rings. That could be one way you can kind of say that. And then since you can live through a halo ring, that kind of makes you pretty immune to a lot of bad stuff, which if they don't have a nervous system, that means the flood can affect them either, which again, makes them way more dangerous because like with the ultimate right. evils out there, the ultimate like killing tools of the flood and halo rings, don't affect them which would be kind of crazy of course this is a little bit extension yeah. of what we we're kind of already told within the campaign so that could be a form of reason why they're called the endless um so i do think they might have some kind of concept of time that they can play around with i think um from one that like uh when you beat the harbinger at the end of the game that uh, the harbinger sent out the signal right and then the weapons are like oh it's a really old signal that they're sending or something like that which is like where is this going to we don't really know at least from my memory yeah and since it's like really weird that's happening like right in front of you but the signal that she's sending is like super old or which is either like either using like old tech i guess to send it or sending it like maybe a message back in time to like the people to her endless people before like being captured on zeta halo or something like that or something going on right there so and plus like especially since we once uh chief and the weapon get like you know teleported out of uh, that room right it's like what a few days later right when you know the weapon says it's yeah. more of a question of when we were there so could that be like utilizing like uh the tech from the endless to be able to kind of teleport through time or something like that I think there's and if that's the case and that's probably what might be their thing at least that's what i'm thinking there's two different ways about going about it uh when it comes to like actual like directly how do they hurt you um it's tough to tell i think they might just be using like guns and pew pews but uh um, yeah you know, of course it could but you know they could be using teleporting in melee or something like that i'm not totally sure uh but that's kind of like the way i think about it in regards to the whole time travel things so i've seen quite a few people saying that time travel is going to be a thing i don't think so so firstly the the whole thing about the old signal it could be that my bet is that the, the the signal is old because it contains data that is required to like unlock the endless or free the endless or whatever and because of the containment facility they're in being very old the data to unlock it is also old could be that the whole thing with chief going through the portal and then i believe it's three days later it's like three days he's in that portal yeah um it's Slip, I'm assuming that was slip freeze, and a slip freeze takes a, like a long time. Like, for example, mm -hmm. you know, Halo 2, when uh, when an Amaclad jumps through the portal with uh, with regret to Delta Halo, and it's like an instant thing from Mombasa to Delta Halo. That time span, uh, I believe, is two weeks. Same with in Halo 3 from uh, from Floodgate to the Ark, that's two weeks there. It takes them two weeks to go through that portal. So it could just be a case of, of slip space being like a slow thing, taking a long time to go through a portal to travel through to your destination because they did go to the complete other side of the ring. You can see the break in the ring on the other side of it at the end in that desert area. So they traveled a really long distance. It could just be a case of, 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 of that. Um, there's also something that 
I think it's the Grand Edict says it in the legendary ending. Oh, I forgot the exact terminology that he uses, but he says, uh, t we can't control time and we can't allow it to be theirs. And people took that as, I, I think a lot of people assumed that that meant that they can control time. Whereas what I think they meant is that the foreigners locked them away so that they can't get a con control of like history in a way. They can't yeah. control uh, like what the foreigners have said that the humans are the reclaimers instead of them. They can't control that, I think. I mean, I'm not going to lie. There are definitely hints at time travel being involved in some capacity, but I don't think that's what they're going for. But mm. then again, I might be wrong. I might be entirely wrong. You never know. <laughs>